Hello my loves and welcome to a new video. My name is Hannah. Welcome to this vlog. This is something a little bit different um, for me. Uh, at the time of me filming this, none of the books that I'm going to be reading in this vlog have been published in the UK yet. Or published anywhere? Published in the UK definitely. Um, and they're all ones that I'm excited. I've got them all on like neck alley. Um, but they're all books that for one reason or another I'm really excited about and I thought it might be fun to vlog my reading experience of them because they came in in kind of a clump and they're all publishing next month in July so that's what we're going to be doing. So let me briefly tell you about uh, the books and a bit about why I want to read them. Um, I have them here. Um, and yeah, then we're just gonna, we're gonna crack on and read them and, and see how we go. The first is one that I have been so excited to read since I heard the concept of it. It is Open Throat by Henry Hoke. And let me read the blurb. I don't normally read blurbs on um, reading blogs, but let me read let me read the, the blurb for this because obviously these are, these are books that are not out yet, so you might not be familiar with them. So, a queer, dangerously hungry mountain lion roams the drought-devastated Hollywood hills. Lonely and fascinated by humanity's foibles, the lion spends their days protecting a homeless encampment and, in quiet moments, Grappling with the complexities of their gender identity, memories of a vicious father, and the indignities of sentience. I have so much language in my brain, our lion says, and nowhere to put it. As the lion confronts a carousel of temptations and threats, they take us on a tour spanning the cruel inequalities of LA while scrambling to avoid the effects of a looming climate crisis. When salvation fin finally seems within reach, they are forced to face down the ultimate question. Do they want to eat a person? Or become one. I just like, I am not, normally a book that is told from the perspective of an animal would like not to be something that I gravitated towards but like I think that sounds so interesting and I have just seen that it has already been blurbed by Catherine Lacey whose book Pew I read last year and like loved so you know that bodes well. The second book is um, Carla by Colin Walsh. This is a, I think like a, I didn't tell you my interpretation of what the book was about for the last one. I just read you the blurb. I'm just gonna read you the blurb. So, do you know what happened already? Cocked that up. That's not Carla. This is Carla. Um, so, Carla by Colin Welsh. In the seaside town of Kinloch on Ireland's west coast, three old friends are thrown together for the first time in years. They, Helen, Joe and Mush, were part of an original group of six inseparable teenagers in the summer of 2003 with motherless, reckless Carla Lannan as their group's white hot centre. Soon after that summer's peak, Carla disappeared without a trace. Now it's 15 years later, Helen has reluctantly returned to Ireland for her father's wedding, Joe is a world famous musician, newly back in town, and Mush has never left, too scared to venture beyond the counter of his mother's cafe. But human remains have been discovered in the woods, two more girls have gone missing, and as past and present collide, the estranged friends are forced to confront their own complicity in the events that led to Carla's disappearance, and to try to stop Kinloss' violent patterns repeating themselves once again. Against the backdrop of a town suffocating on its own secrets is a story that builds from a smoulder to a stunning climax. Carla brilliantly examines the sometimes brutal costs of belonging, as well as the battle in the human heart between vengeance and forgiveness, despair and redemption. This summer, lose yourself, find Carla. Okay, I find the ending of that quite cheesy, but the general premise I think sounds cool. I really like um, Irish literature. I love stuff that's set in like rural communities where there's lots of like secrets and past stuff. I think it sounds great. I've never read anything by Colin Walsh before. Um, but I just remember I was like having a browse um, through some different um, like upcoming release lists and uh, 
that really stood out to me. I thought it, I thought it sounded great. And then the final one is, uh, is the only one of this trio of books where I have read the author's work before and I absolutely loved her debut novel, Boy Parts. This is Penance by Eliza Clark, and I am super excited about this one. So, blurb for Penance is, do you know what happened already? Did you know her? Did you see it on the internet? Did you listen to a podcast? Did the hosts make jokes? Did you see the pictures of the body? Did you look for them? It's been nearly a decade since the horrifying murder of 16-year-old Joan Wilson rocked crow on sea and the events of that terrible night are now being published for the first time. That story is Penance, a dizzying feat of masterful storytelling where Eliza Clark manoeuvres us through accounts from the inhabitants of this small seaside town. Placing us in the capable hands of journalist Alec Z. Corelli, Clark allows him to construct what he claims is the definitive account of the murder and what led up to it. Built on hours of interviews with witnesses and family members painstaking for historical research and most notably correspondence with the killers themselves, the result is a riveting snapshot of lives rocked by tragedy and a town left in turmoil. The only question is, how much of it is true? This is giving me, like, so Eliza Clark um, is a, I, if you're new here, hello, I, I live in Newcastle uh, in the northeast of England, uh, which is where Eliza Clark is, is from. And the reason I particularly wanted to read her first book was because um, it was one of my like uh, reading goals this year to read more local authors. Um, and this is reminding me a bit of the work of another Northeast author, Matt Veselovsky, who, um, whose six story series is kind of like about a true crime podcast. And I loved that series. So I'm very, very interested in seeing how Eliza explores kind of similar ground. So those are the books. Um, I'm so excited for all of them. Uh, and I will, I will keep you posted with my reading. For now, I am going to go and make some bread and have it with the most delicious vegan lemon curd that my auntie Angela made. So that's what's gonna happen now. And I will check in when I have some stuff to say about Open Throat. Catch you later. Hey, it's been like... 60 seconds. Um, I thought I would just read you the very first opening so that you can get a feel for it. Um, there's no punctuation, but he uses line breaks quite a lot. So I'll try and give you a little pause so you can indicate, so you can kind of get a feel for it. But here we go. I've never eaten a person, but today I might. I wake up in my thicket to the sound of whip cracks and look out and see a bulky man in a brown leather jacket and brown hat swinging the whip towards two other people, a man and a woman. The woman holds a phone and says, you look just like him, oh my God. The man with the whip smiles and cracks it again and I feel something in the bottom of my hunger, in the bottom of my stomach that's not hunger. I also feel hunger. The man without the whip lies down on his back and spreads his leg and lifts his feet up to the sky and shouts, okay, do it, just flick him, just lightly flick my nuts. I really like it. <laughs> well, this is intense. Location two of 838. <laughs> Great first line though. I finished Open Throat by Henry Hoke and I really liked it. I really liked it. Um, it ended up being a really 
fast read and actually I would really recommend it if you can. You would read, you could read this cover to cover in, I don't know, depending on your reading speed, like anywhere from 90 minutes to two hours. Uh, it's not, it's not a, it's not a slow read. Um, and I think there is something quite immersive about being inside a mountain lion's head uh, that actually really would have benefited. I kind of wish I had been able to read it in one unbroken stint. But um, yes, so what is it? I mean, in lots of ways, I think the, the write-up did a really good job of kind of telling you pretty much what it's about. It is a mountain lion roaming around the hills surrounding LA, overhearing snatches of human conversation and trying to work out what we're like and trying to understand us and um, becoming attached to particular people or groups of people. Um, and um, it's, it's really a book about um, sort of isolation and trying to find your place and feeling like you are not accepted or worse than not being accepted, being perceived as a threat. And that kind of metaphor can be read in a number of ways because there's lots of, he covers so much ground in such a short book. Um, I mean, literally, cause like roaming creature. Um, this is a book about our destruction of habitats, both of wildlife and of human habitats, right? It's about the only gonna get more severe refugee crisis that we are all facing and how unaware and unprepared we are for it. It is about how and why we fear that which we don't understand. Um, it's about trying to forge a new path and not f not follow in the footsteps of the generations who have come before us, recognising where those footsteps may have led us in directions that, that don't serve us. Um, and yeah, it's... And that sounds big and heavy, but because it's so told from the perspective of an animal, um, that's kind of woven through, it's more, it's like you're interrogating those ideas on a kind of experiential level uh, rather than a kind of intellectual one. It's a bit more the, the sort of slight existential crisis that the mountain lion is having feels, feels animal rather than intellectual. Do you, does that make sense? Um, but yeah, I think I'm, I'm going to stop, I'm going to stop talking about it there. Um, I think it was really interesting. It's written in a very stream of conscious style, consciousness style. And, um, I'd be really interested to hear an audio book of this earlier this year, earlier this year. Yes. I listened to Little Scratch by Rebecca Watson. Now in if you've read that book, um, Open Throat is not like that book in terms of um, uh, 
like theme or character or whatever um but it is told in a very you're very much like inside a person's head so it everything's kind of like running on and there's a real momentum to the writing and I think it will make a really interesting audiobook because the audiobook for for Little Scratch was was really powerful because it really lent itself to that writing style and I suspect depending on who they have doing the audio performance that um the same will be true for Open Throat. Um Is there anything else I want to say? Um No, I don't I don't I don't think I I want to say any more about it I think um it is a book that should be experienced so I am going to let you go off and experience it and and if you do go away and read it come come back and and leave a comment down below and we'll have a little um chat about it um like I don't think it's gonna be like an an all-time favorite book or anything but I really, really appreciate what Henry Hoke was doing, and I think I'm pretty. This I think this is his debut novel. It's bold for a debut, um, and yeah, I uh, I will be keeping an eye out for anything that he writes in the future because um, yeah, it's very interesting. Um, chatting too much, not hydrating enough. Um, and then I have I have started reading Carla um, by Colin Walsh. I am four <laughs> percent of the way through, so I've literally read like the prologue and the first and the first little um, chapter. So I don't have a huge amount to go on yet, but I wanted to mention that I'd started reading it here. Um, because I'm about to go to London for work, well not now, but tomorrow after my working day I'll be getting on a train down to London because um, I'm speaking at a conference tomorrow in London and so I may want to do some like more bitty informal updates as I read that one but I wanted to at least <laughs> have told you that I've started reading it. So I am, um, I was about to say, tell you what page I'm on, but because it's an EPUB file, um, I don't have page numbers. I'm on location 222 of 5690, which according to my Kindle means I've got seven and a half hours of reading to do. So um, yeah. I'm going to go pack my suitcase, get ready for bed, maybe read a little bit of this in bed. And um, you will probably next, you might see a dog walk, you might just see me on the train. Um, and hopefully I will have read some more of this at some point. See you there. Hey. <laughs> um... You will not have seen any London. London's been and gone. It's been a whole thing involving a water damaged phone, a lost phone charger, and ultimately resulting in me needing to buy a new phone, which I now have. So, yay. Um, I'm very tired. <laughs> It's been a very stressful week, but tomorrow is Friday. I have an all day meeting in New York and then I'm going up to Glasgow for the weekend. And then I'm going back down to London on Sunday because I've got another event in London on Monday. So I'm gonna take you along on those. Hopefully no more broken technology. And at some point in that time, I'm going to have more energy to be able to talk to you about books. I am about halfway through Carla and I am enjoying it. I'm just, it's just been a week, you know, it's just been a week and it's fine. It's all 
situational. It will all pass, but... Oh. See you in possibly York or possibly Glasgow or possibly London. from my hotel in London. This isn't going to be a um, a big catch up. Um, <laughs> but I just had to say, I'm having a really bad time at the moment with books and animal violence. I am enjoying Carla by Colin Walsh and we will chat about it soon. There's quite a lot of animal violence in it, like violence against animals, animals being violent, animal death. It's making me sad. <laughs> um, yeah, you'll you'll know if um, if you've seen my vlog where I was reading Hungry Ghosts by Kevin Jarrett Hussain, which is another book that I really liked, but that also had dead dogs in. I know it's a thing that's real, but, oh, I need a break. I need a fucking break. No more dead dogs. No more sad dogs, please. Good morning. I've had a very, very sad morning so far because I have this amazing rust colored jumpsuit that I bought from a charity shop and it's amazing and I love it so much and I went to put it on this morning and it has shrunk. It's now lost about an inch in the body, which means I cannot wear it. And I'm so, so sad about it. Why do we need to wash clothes? It's so sad. I put off washing it for so fucking long. It wasn't dry clean only or anything. It was just, you know, when it's like linen-y and you're like, are you gonna, are you gonna fuck me over if I put you in a washing machine? The answer is yes, it is. Um, so that aside, thank God I actually packed a spare outfit. That's all I'm gonna say. I never normally do. So here we go. I have finished reading Carla by Colin Walsh. This is, this book is a ride. Um, okay, so I can't remember at all how much I've told you about it, but essentially it is told from three perspectives. Um, three friends, or who were friends when they were teenagers. Um, their friend Carla disappears under very mysterious circumstances. No one hears from her again. And then 20 years later, they are all kind of drawn back to their hometown. And we follow three of them. So we have um, Mush. Mush has stayed in Kinloch, stayed where they are, um, works in his mum's cafe. We know, and this was a bit that I was unsure about for most of the novel, we know that something happened to him around about the time that Carla disappeared and that now he's got really extensive facial scarring and it has sort of um it's meant that he's kind of withdrawn and and 
it's knocked his confidence, I guess. Um, I don't, I would be very interested in, in hearing um, someone with, ooh, I've kicked you, I'm sorry. Someone with lived experience of kind of scarring or, or facial disfigurement because um, they felt a touch one dimensional to me, but I don't, I don't know. Anyway, that's, that's Mush, he's, he's there. He's kind of the steady, he was the steady Eddie of the group. He was the nice boy. Um, he's there. Then we have Helen. Helen um, was like a bit of a misfit, found the group a little bit later on. She's a bit abrasive. Um, her mum died when she was younger and she's a bit repressed. And um, But her and Carla were kind of quite especially close um or became especially close because they both had um like mummy issues basically and um helen has like fucked off from kinloch hasn't really looked back but is back now because her dad is getting married um and she's gonna go to the wedding but she's off being like people say a journalist in Canada. She's actually written a few freelance journalism pieces and she's basically teaching TEFL um, and sort of feeling like she doesn't really know what she's doing, like classic 30s. Um, and then there is Joe. Joe Brennan uh, is famous. He's really famous. He um, He's like a rock star, um, kind of breakout star. Mush used to be in a band with him. Um, and now he's Joe Brennan and he's um, very alcoholic and fame has not made him happy and there's that thing going on. So they, they are three perspectives that you're getting. And there was something about, there was a choice that Colin Walsh made and I was giving it until I'd read the entire book um, to basically mush and helen's perspectives are told in first person cool like classic nice joe's told in second person so like you 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 and i don't i couldn't work out why um because it does that thing that um oh what was i reading that flipped around the promise by damon galgett where like it I think sometimes second person, people think it, it's like you, you expect it to make you feel closer to the character, but actually it's more distancing because it, when you say you, it makes me more aware that you don't mean me, you mean someone else. Um, and so I always find it really jarring and particularly, Colin Walsh is not afraid to show you the faults of the characters, but he especially goes in on Joe. Um, and Joe is the least kind of, possibly the least likable, maybe the most culpable for some of the issues, definitely is sort of seen as a bit of the villain of the piece in some, from some perspectives, because it's very complex. Um, but I, so I think that the second person, it just enforced that even more. And so for me, then the book fell out of balance. That being said, it's a page turner. It, it has actually taken me quite a long time to read it. Um, but that's, that was, it's taken me a long time to read it because it takes me a long time to read books because I'm a bit scattered. But like, it's, it's very like compelling. Um, I wasn't always sure about the the pacing, it's hard to talk about these kind of like crime books, right? Because like, I don't wanna spoil stuff for you. Um, but essentially we, we are hearing the present day and what's going on. And there is a sort of an echo of what happened to Carla happens again in the present day. So they're kind of dealing with that and it's throwing up all of these questions about what happened in the past and there's so much that is unresolved about what they experienced when they were teenagers. And on the whole, I think it was really, I think it was really well done. 
Um, I said in like a voice note, which I, I can't decide if I'm gonna, if I will have included or not, um, cause that's not really the, the vibe of this vlog so far, those short little bits. But if I have, then you already know. And if I haven't, I filmed a little bit yesterday being like the dread that I felt. I was so tired yesterday and I had to be up really early this morning. Um, and I stayed up to finish it because I was just like, I can't go to sleep. Not knowing the end did sort of it did come around quite quickly and it I was a bit like oh oh um <laughs> at the end um it wasn't for me I didn't like guess it I didn't guess the resolution but I could see the bread comes that the author had laid to lead me towards that. So like, it, it didn't seem to come out of nowhere and be stupid, but it also um, didn't feel like, well, yeah, obviously. But I am, I'm gonna say again, I mean, check check content. I mean, there's there's lots of heavy stuff and difficult things in, in this book, um, but definitely check content warnings for abuse, violence, I can't, it probably be a bit, uh, animal death and animal cruelty. Um, but I won't give the others because they're a little bit spoilery, but if you know you need to look after yourself by, by checking content warnings, then I'm telling you, please do that. Um, so yeah, it's not a book that I always enjoyed reading. Um, and I did, like I said, it did feel a little unbalanced in the way that the characters were written about. And I don't really understand the choice to put Joe in second person. There was also like, um, it's written like with a version of Irish, like Irish voice in it, but that seemed to pop up a little inconsistently. Um, like you didn't have like, one person, I mean, Mush generally sounded more Irish, which is unsurprising because he's the one who stayed there and the other two have kind of left and don't live in Ireland anymore. Um, but they're like, yeah, it just was a little, voice-wise, it, it sometimes was a little, I don't know what the word that I mean is, a little inconsistent. Um, but I think he's a really, I think he's a really good writer. Some of the pacing, didn't quite work for me. Um, so I think I said before, like structurally, you've got, it starts with a prologue and then you get these reasonably short character um, perspectives that are happening in chronological order, I think over like th four days. Um, so it's quite, the present day timeline is quite short. Um, and I do think it could have been tighter and I think it could have been a bit shorter. Um, I think this, the setup in the first third, I think was a little over extended. Um, but I did, I did enjoy it. If you do like a, uh, I swear, what, like, what a lie. I literally just said, I don't know if I can say I enjoyed it. I, I do think it was, uh, a good piece of writing. I was swept up in the book. I was captivated by it. I was interested. Um, like I said, it's not a not an easy or comfortable read at lots of points. Um, I do think he wrote teenagers quite well, because writing teenagers is hard, especially when you're like not a teenager. Do you know what I mean? Um, and sometimes the characters would do and say things where I'm like, "What the fuck are you doing?" And then you'd remember that they were like fifteen, and you're like, "Oh yeah, you do say really." uncaring things sometimes when you're a when you're a teenager and you do do stupid things and you aren't always considerate because you're not a grown-up yet um so yeah I do, I do think that was quite believable if like a bit of a frustrating and difficult experience um but yeah if you if you enjoy like a crime book that is more on the um like on the literary side of crime, then you might, you might enjoy it. Um, and I did, there were parts of it that where the writing was really, really um, lovely. So 
yeah that has been that i once again this vlog is taking um much longer to complete than i thought but i'm filming two at the moment which was a bold and frankly stupid of me um but there we are that's what that's what's happening but it means that because i'm reading like two sets of books for two different vlogs i'm just going slowly um so it's monday now I, I normally put a video up on a wednesday i doubt this is going to be ready um so who knows what what will have gone up this week on my channel but probs not this um so i've got a conference again today in london and then i'll be reading on the train i will probably start penance on the train and then yeah i will i will catch up with you about that but i i really want to read that like ASAP because I'm going to the book launch in like a couple of weeks um because they're they're launching the book in Newcastle which is nice so um yes I need to get a little bit of a wriggle on I need to go to work now and um I need to mourn my linen jumpsuit if you have any tips on how to re-stretch out like cotton I'm so sad I'm so sad about it I don't often find stuff in the charity shop that fits me and this is like it was like my signature look I used to wear it a lot man I fucking loved it and I'm so sad so um yeah if you could if you if you have any magical magical fixes I'd, I'd really appreciate it but other than that, I will chat to you about books soon. See you later. Hello. It is around 9.30 at night. I've just got to London and on the train, I finished Penance by Eliza Clark. Um, wave to all the trains at King's Cross Station. I've got a delightful view of them all out my uh, hotel window. Um, you may recall, in fact, you should recall better than me because it happened more recently for you than it did for me, um, that I said at the start of this video that this was the book of the three that I was most looking forward to because of how much I loved Eliza Clark's debut boy parts. Um, so I'm, I'm really sad to say that I didn't like this book. <laughs> Me and all my chins are so upset about it. Um, it's sort of a, it's sort of a send up of true crime, and so the book follows um, this really upsetting and disturbing case whereby three teenage girls tortured and killed another teenage girl, and within the context of the book, that's a real thing that happened, and what the book is is a true crime book about that case and it opens um essentially with this sort of like disclaimer from a fictitious publisher um explaining that they've like that they had pulled this book from production because the author who was a kind of tabloid gen tabloid journalist who was caught up in the phone hacking scandal and then became a true crime author now has basically i've lost my train of thought yeah true crime so he's become a true crime author um because his kind of main journalistic career is over in the light of that um scandal but once again, he has come under fire from uh, the people that he interviewed to write this manuscript saying that he's not represented them. Um, 
accurately that he's fabricated and that um some of the sources that he got on some of the perpetrators who were in um secure juvenile units he at, were actually like confidential therapeutic like writings that they'd done at the at the juvenile center which obviously he shouldn't have had access to so you get like a brief little preface of that um and then you get the manuscript of the book and what i loved about boy parts was eliza clark's voice or like the narrative voice that she had in that it was like sassy and sharp and it had a real edge to it but almost like i think that the conceit of this book was always going to be a little bit dissatisfying to me because of that setup because she wasn't writing as like herself or kind of like a similar uh she was writing as this kind of hack basically and so there was nothing in the writing that that sort of felt special or interesting. It felt like it kind of could have been written by anyone, which is really surprising to me because I thought her voice was so unique in boy parts and it was such a shame that that wasn't there. There were interesting ideas, but so essentially the book, I guess, is, is sort of exploring like how true crime can be incredibly exploitative. There are extracts within the manuscript of like true crime podcasts discussing the case that are awful and horrible. And I absolutely think are kind of examples of what some true crime podcasters are like in terms of not respecting the victims etc um and it felt like she had she had good points but it it just narratively it didn't really have anywhere to go because we knew from the outset that a lot of what was in the manuscript was going to be discredited or had been discredited or at least wasn't true and then at the end you get this kind of interview with him and a journalist where i guess he's sort of it's all blown up and i guess he's sort of trying to um justify himself but it all just felt I don't read a lot of true crime books. I used to listen to a lot of true crime podcasts, like a lot of people did. Um, and I totally like burnt myself out with it and just, well, not anymore. Um, but the, the thing with the true crime book is that narratively, narratively they aren't very interesting because we know, we sort of know what happened. Um, and there were like, whole digressions in the book where they'd go and like explore like a bit of like history of the town or like a bit of folklore or whatever but it had no bearing on the the actual crime and I don't know in a, the cynic in me feels a little bit like when you're writing a book within a book you have a little bit of license to kind of be like, well, you know, it doesn't have to be like perfect or amazing because, you know, it's a fictitious writer writing it. And, and that might be really harsh and mean, but it, the whole thing to me felt kind of flat and un, like, yeah, like unsatisfying. Not that, you know, I mean, it is a book about a horrific murder and there are, there were, as I said, some kind of interesting parts, but there were also some bits that just felt quite shoehorned in. And I think if you're going to explore this idea of 
you know, like, people embellishing the truth, true crime, etc. But then you're only giving the embellished version. It's like, it was almost like that was like half of what we needed. And then we also actually needed to know what happened because now it's like, well, it all just felt quite nebulous and a bit unclear and I don't know I almost wish I I almost wish I hadn't recorded this tonight and I'd slept on it but I don't really think I don't really think I have like a grand realization about it do you know what I mean like I I think I was always going to struggle with the structure of the book because basically it was like a kind of like bog standard whatever true crime book within a book with two bookends of isn't true crime exploitative and nasty and I felt a bit like it felt I don't know it felt a little bit disrespectful of the reader like, I was like, you didn't need to take all of my time. You didn't need to make me read the entire manuscript in order to make this point. I don't know. Maybe I'm just grumpy. I also... Yeah, no. But I am I'm going to the book launch of this book in a couple of days. So it's Tuesday today. The book launch is on Thursday. So I will... I will wrap up this video here but if I have if after going to the book launch like I find something else out or like there gets like alternate perspectives or like whatever um I will insert that in a sec um in fact no I will insert that here if I have anything to say hi 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 this is um sort of editing Hannah uh, I realised I said I would update you after the book event and then I didn't do that so I'm doing that now. Um, I really like Eliza Clark. I think in person she is like a bit awkward but funny and witty and I really really liked her ideas and the discussion that she and Matt had around the themes of the book I thought was really really interesting. Ultimately it hasn't changed how I feel about the book because when I was hearing Eliza talk about some stuff, I just felt like her, her interpretation of the themes wasn't what I got out of the book. Um, and you know, reading and writing is alchemy, all right? So sometimes it works for some people and it doesn't work for others. I'm not saying it's a bad book. I'm not saying you shouldn't read it. Um, it didn't quite work for me, but I still really like Eliza. Cool, bye. Okay, so now you know, I don't know, but you know if um, I've changed my mind <laughs> um, or not. Uh, and yeah, I will, um, I will see you for another video soon. Obviously these books are all um, new releases. They're all coming out very shortly or are already out um, by the time this video goes up. So let me know if you're interested in checking any of them out. If you have read or are planning on reading Penance, and I would love actually Having said, I don't enjoy it. Um, if you do still want to give it a go, I would love to hear alternate opinions on it because it's weird to me that I loved her first book so much and I so didn't love her second one. But hey ho, them's the them's the breaks. Sometimes reading be like that. So um, yeah. I am going to wrap this up here. If you are still here um, and you've liked this video, please do literally like this video. Um, that would be very helpful. And um, subscribe to my channel if you want to hear more from me on various books coming up. And uh, it would be lovely to chat. You can also follow me on Instagram 
at Hannah Lost the Plot over there where I have kind of like more regular reading updates, bits and bobs, etc. Let's be pals, okay? Cool. I'm very tired, I'm gonna go to sleep now. See you later, bye. Thank you.